How's it going, everybody? This is our podcast shout out, and we are shouting out another hometown podcast from back where we live in Bandera County, and that would be the Christy G podcast. She's a pretty down to earth podcaster. She just talks about general topics and everything, and she has some of her friends on, and they do interviews and discussions and everything, and it's just general topics, and it's a lot of fun to listen to. So check her out on Apple Podcasts, check her out on Spotify and wherever else you get your podcasts. And yeah, it's a good show. Check it out. And with that said, on with the show. I'm Bo Maddox. I'm Robert Ortegon. I'm Ashley Chancellor. I'm Dakota Chancellor. This is Collateral Cinema. Welcome to Collateral Cinema, the only movie podcast that matters, where we focus on good movies, bad movies, and everything else in between in the world of cinema. We are podcasting somewhere from San Antonio, Texas, and yes, my friends, we are a 420-friendly podcast, so smoke it if you got it, ladies and gentlemen. Smoke it if you got it. Woohoo! Oh, yeah. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. And, yeah, I mean, I hadn't been here since our last episode i know it's it's been <laughs> it's been ages right it's so i mean long. jesus christ man i know i, I think i missed the last episode with your brother yeah. yeah that was unfortunate that was actually a really fun episode as well right guys the fifth element yeah we yeah had that a was, ton of fun with that episode yeah as did i we had a lot of fun your brother was a good and good addition to that episode as well oh and he'll definitely be back i may as well go ahead and announce it right now he's going to be back on our episode on uh, the anime classic akira so Hell yeah. that's going to be a few more episodes down the line, but we will be very much excited to have it back on the show. Yeah, I think that's a movie I actually brought up to the table originally. You threw in the lot. Akira? Akira? Or? Akira, yeah. Akira. It, it's Akira. Akira. Akira, okay. It's a classic anime movie. Anyway. Oh, oh yeah. sorry. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you go ahead, dude. Anyway, we are here discussing the 1974 film Gone in 60 Seconds, and it was written, directed, and produced and starring... H.B. Toby Holicky, and what a movie this was for its time. The shoestring budget, uh, what he had to work with, and this was basically independent at its finest, you know? The sexy dress, the music. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. What's the going lights? on here? What's going on here? The lights. Ding! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had to... Well, no, we got her out ding. of the way. It, we got that was quick. The there we go. <laughs> yeah, right, right at the onset. Hell yeah. Anyway, H.B.K., uh, Holocaine's character, Mandarin uh, Pace, is an insurance investigator by day and professional car thief by night. Yes. And he is given the task of stealing 48 cars in five days. 48. And they're all given code names. Every yeah. single one of them. Every single car. Yeah. I, I love the code names that they give these oh, cars. Oh, they're fantastic. Man. Especially, of course, the all-time classic, the iconic Eleanor. Eleanor, yeah. Yeah. I mean, she she's a beauty, isn't she? Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, Robert, what are the specs on the on that car? On the Eleanor car? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, um, that was 1971 to 73 model. They dressed it up like a 73, but I think it's, I think it's originally 71. Anyway, it's a 428 Cobra. It's a lot different than Steve McQueen's car in the Bullet movie. That was like a 390 right. GT. Yeah, I remember that car. That was interesting. 68 Fastback, which there you go. is a hell of a fucking car, too. Yeah. Another movie, Robert introduced shows right i guess yep yeah just and like this one i just hope to be pulling more cars like that over my head i guess there you go <laughs> <laughs> yeah no this is this is uh through and through a car movie and um I, I think what i respect the most is that it was directed produced and written by a car lover Mm-hmm. Yeah. This guy, uh, you know, Holicky, he had no background at all in filmmaking. He, he's just a car lover who wanted to make a movie. And I, I guess, you know, we were talking about this earlier, you know, but the uh, the fact that like this movie is in and of itself a low budget film production wise. But when you look at, you know, the amount of the budget that must have been spent to all the cars, which he bought himself. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. All his babies. See, all, all the money, all the budget, right, that went into the cars. Right. The, the movie making part of it, like, you can tell, I mean, like, the, the people, the cops, they were just, like, you know, his, his friends throwing in some random clothes that are in his closet real quick. And, you ordinary know, like, citizens. ordinary citizens yeah. that are on the street, right? There, no one was wearing any, you know, like, cop uniforms. No. All the cop cars were, like, police stickers on them with, like, a red light. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, you could tell, like, a $20 light on eBay now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you could dress up a, a little Ford uh, Focus or something. It's, it's almost kind of got a little bit of that quality gun though had, you know, they just filmed regular people, right? Yeah. It had almost kind of a guerrilla filmmaking feel to it, which at, at that time was still kind of a new concept as far as, you know, just going out on the street and just, you know, sometimes even without permits and just filming, you yeah. know? I I mean I, I would imagine that they had permits for most of the actual car chases. Yeah, I, I would think so. I mean, but he, he, all he the bystanders so. were like just regular civilians, right? Yeah, yeah. not actors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no real major actor in this film. Yeah, and and yeah, like, like you were saying, um, except Hall, the, except the guy who made it. <laughs> yeah, Holly Key stars, you know, in the lead role himself. So another yeah. another time he was so right. There you go. Yeah, um, That's and how you do it. He just hired a bunch of friends, <laughs> and he hired his, his friends. Yeah, his actor friends, exactly. Hmm. <laughs> but um, I, I thought it was just interesting how he owned all of those cars himself, all the cars that were used in the the making of the film, and all the cars that were famously what ninety three cars were crashed. Yeah, ninety three cars were crashed in about less than forty minutes. Whoa! Just in ha- just in half the movie, right? Holy crap! Well, man. you gotta yeah, you gotta see. So this movie, I, I didn't realize how much of it was just one car chase scene. Yeah, and like, it's like it's like 40 50 minutes of that you know it is the longest car chase scene in cinema history well, there you go yeah. 40 minutes wow no way longer than vanishing point probably longer than the burt reynolds and the bandit oh, yeah. that didn't come till later right i'm not really sure like, what, what the what bandit did? was like 79 oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay this, this is 74 right yeah, so roughly it, it's yeah. got to be right around that dirty mary crazy larry time no the largest car chase in cinema history is nascar <laughs> 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 exactly <laughs> there you go Oh, that's fantastic. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you hear some weird audio qualities, it's because certain people touched my mixing board when I was gone. You touched his what? mixing board? We didn't touch your mixing somebody, board. Somebody, oh yeah, somebody touched my mixing board. We, we just recorded an episode on our own, so. Yeah, that that's exactly. Well, we didn't touch the mixing he board. He knows, he knows, <laughs> the man knows. I'm sorry, I had to just stop to bust some balls real quick because my the mid-range on Ash's track was just almost turned all the way down nice which is just miserable yeah. miserable exactly uh, but, my voice makes up for it right guys <laughs> <laughs> but anyways okay so the opening movie the billing credits it starts out with the lead credit going to eleanor which is the car right right yeah it, starring eleanor starring eleanor <laughs> <laughs> and yeah that's that's freaking hilarious Oh, that was great. Okay. That I, I thought it was interesting because I didn't realize it was a car in the beginning yeah, you, when you I made, first saw it. He made the car the main star. <laughs> right. No, he did. And I didn't realize that when I saw it. I saw it, Eleanor. I was like, what is this guy's name, Eleanor? Like, what's going on? Like, yeah. I didn't, couldn't figure it out. It's and, basically a code name. Code, yeah, it was a code name. But then I realized when they started naming the cars and then they mentioned Eleanor later, Eleanor he, later I figured it out. You name them all girls' names. Yeah, there you go. And I realized that whenever I watched the remake with Nick Cage, yeah, which I, I, we'll talk about a little bit about, I got later, I guess. But yeah, oh, go uh, ahead, and, go ahead and bring that up too, so we can compare it all. Yeah, yeah. Well, the the movie with Nick Cage, I think the one it's a loose remake, and then the one common element I wanted to point out here was that it, it does feature Eleanor, and, and oh, the movie yeah. is kind of centered around Eleanor. It better so be. So that's the yeah. that's the primary <laughs> you know driving force here in this duology. Yeah, it's really interesting how the remake really hits all of those same story notes that the original had. You know, like for yeah. instance, with the car that had the heroin in the trunk. Yeah. You know, the, that just, whole scene is almost exactly the same. Al- almost practically, it's yeah. got the same kind of car. Even They've the car. got heroin in the truck. The police is knocking on the door. The they drop a little bit of the heroin on the ground, and the car blows the 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 engine blows the yeah. <laughs> heroin away rev, rev <laughs> while they're trying to hide it. You know, from the cop who's literally there so it, it was almost like exact they you know <laughs> and eleanor being in international towers as well yeah long beach international towers and then using the same bridge too yeah. just like the original yeah but El- eleanor is actually a different car right eleanor is actually a 67 gt500 shelby in the yeah. in the in the shelby. remake right yeah did they change the name of the car in the remake 
I mean, wasn't it it's, also it's, Eleanor? It's still Eleanor. It's Eleanor, okay. but it's just, it's not a Shelby GT500. Oh, a lot okay, of people okay, thought, I got you. A lot of people thought it was the Mach 1, but it's it's a regular 1970 Fastback with a 428 Cobra, which nice. still beats your ass, right? If only any of those numbers made sense to me. <laughs> yeah, we're not all car nerds here, but... Well, I got I mean, Chevy numbers in here, too. <laughs> I'm just, just bored. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hell yeah, man. Trap sealed. But I mean, also, I I like how similar the characters were in both of these movies. Honestly, so? oh yeah, yeah. I mean, even though the premise was different, the premise because in the first one, you know, in the original, which is I guess our main focus this episode, but yeah. it was um kind of more centered on just these these this these group of car thieves doing it for the money, right? Yeah, yeah. It, and it, it, it's pretty much centered on the group of car thieves themselves and how they operate and everything in the original movie, more or less. Right, right. And and their motivation overall is just, you know, it's just a paycheck. You know, whereas the the remake kind of changes that quite a bit because it's Nicholas Cage trying to save his brother. Yeah, yeah. And Giovanni, he's, Giovanni he's, Ribisi. He'd actually retired from the life and he's being dragged back in, right? And, and personally, yeah. I find that to be a much more compelling story. Yeah, see, there's it more really of a back, there's more of a backstory. With there the is one. see with the with this and one there's there's more of a moral purpose to it. Yeah, you know? exactly. See with this one with the the one we were originally talking about, the older one, um it was really weird. A lot of it was like voiceover did you notice like mostly during the oh, beginning the, it was the all ADR like, was off like, yeah yeah it was terrible <laughs> but, right well not just that but like there was a point in the movie where it was like they were just you know they were doing the whole mechanic scene where they take them out the car and they were oh, just, that was just them talking did you watch while what, they were doing all did that. you watch what they were doing Yes, I they, saw exactly they, what was going on. They, I knew exactly what was going on. They took the junk there. car yes. and they switched numbers with, was the, with the stolen one. Perfect. That, that was, was well executed. That, the that, beginning that, shows you how to steal a car. It does. It shows you exactly how to steal a car. <laughs> yeah, how to do it cleanly and professionally. Yeah. And, and Haliki's character, Madrian Pace, um, actually has this idiosyncrasy of he only steals insurance cars. Yeah. yeah. So there is kind of that moral purpose hidden in there except for the fact that he just rams everybody's cars on the highway at the end and, and does potentially injures anybody. injures and potentially kills civilians in five cities yeah, yeah exactly we, oh, yeah, yeah. We, we were talking about that earlier in dakota's room when we were chilling out i mean he, that's pretty much a rampage Oh yeah, he rampages through five Absolutely. cities. That's like, he doesn't give a fuck. That's like five or six stars <laughs> yeah, no, worth. Exactly. That, that's five. That's five star wanted on GTA Five. Like you're fucked. <laughs> you're you're exactly. But exactly. I don't know. I think that quality makes me like the original more. I mean, it, the the remake was fun. Don't get me wrong, but it just kind of felt like more more Hollywood, I guess. And this. I have to respect the original more for being this guy's personal project. I mean, Robert, for you, that's something personal on two levels because you're yeah. a car lover and an aspiring filmmaker. Oh, yeah. That's why I became that. Movies like that. That's why I wanted to be an actor, too, is because, you know, it's mostly the car movies. I mean, that's why you brought this to the podcast. That's why I, I mean, bring this. That's why I bring any other car movie that's fucking badass. There you go. It's kind of like a history lesson I'm giving you guys. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> <That's good. laughs> but, yeah, about the automobile and... Now they just make shit cars that are not worth a damn. Yeah. yeah. Wah, wah, I was actually wah. driving, funny enough, not too long ago in San Antonio, and, you know, I'm in my, you know, 2004 Chevy Silverado, and I've got the, I'm driving and I break and this Mustang rams in the back of me, and I was Ooh. doing everything legal, you know, and that vehicle was totaled. Piece I mean, of shit, yeah. piece of shit. It was totaled, like, I remember thinking 2014, maybe, maybe a little less. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe a couple years earlier, black Mustang just got ran. My truck, not a dent on it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. I would have I been pissed. Oh uh, man, I, I felt bad. I was like, dude, I, I mean, <laughs> we traded insurances and that was that. Yeah. Dude, the fucking Mustang in this movie gets totaled. It does. It but it beating. still goes, it takes a beating and, and it still drives. That was, still that was all real. That was all real. That was real. Yeah. That That's what I love about this film, okay? it's It's got to be the use of practical effects, which is very yeah. indie, very low budget. Right. But in this case, they're using real cars and there's nothing that... The, the the remake lacks that you know it, it's CGI. It's I don't not, even know if it's practical effects, more just like stunts. There is you know? stunts. There is a yeah. lot of CGI in the Nicolas Cage version, especially Cage when he jumps game. the ramp. Yeah, I mean the jump in the ramp. I mean he jumped into some boxes and then landing it. That was an actual landing ramp. But in the middle of all that, that was yeah. CGI. All right. So like, Haliki literally put himself through hell because look at the jump he does at the end of that movie. Yeah, like, that he, was real. He did. That, that. was real. Yeah. And they slowed that. it down. They had multiple cameras on it, and yeah, he but fucked his car up a little like bit. Looked like he did it yeah. a few times, right? He had to have done it a few that? times. Imagine. You know, you know what I love about that is you can still see the crowd that gathered for this uh, stunt, just like yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, oh man, it was. It must have been so much fun to watch them do oh, that I'm fucking sure. stunt. It was amazing. Man. 
It must have been so much fun. He did all his own stunts. That was ultimately yeah. his untimely death filming yeah. the sequel. Filming Gone to 60 Seconds 2, he died. Golly. In, in the making, during the making of that. That's a damn shame. Yeah. This is Mandrian Pace, number one car thief in America. He'll steal anything, anytime, as long as it's insured. I read my horoscope this morning. <laughs> it's front insurance investigation. His business, stealing cars. And now he's got to fill the biggest contract yet. He had delivered over 40 cars to the docks by Saturday. That's a sad story. To the list. <laughs> You can lock your car, but if he wants it, it's gone in 60 seconds. Get down. Things don't always go as planned, even for a pro. Sometimes when you steal a car, you get more than you bargained for. Holy shit! Here. Who is it? Oi! The whole damn thing's loaded. Fasten your seat up for what Carcraft magazine calls the most hair-raising chase scene ever filmed. Hollywood Reporter says it's a thrill a minute. You owe it to your car to see Gone in 60 Seconds. It's Grand Theft Entertainment. Gone in 60 Seconds. Rated PG. Yeah. But yeah, I heard that, you know, I was reading up on this and apparently he modified the, there were two Eleanor's there are four total referenced in the movie, right? Yeah. But two cars were used in the making. One of them was modified to be like a, a NASCAR on the inside. They took apart the exterior threw on a NASCAR roll cage. Oh wow. And then, you know, threw the fit right. back on and the body, I guess, I, I don't know enough about cars, but I, I get what you're saying. Though. That one was junked, but the other one was kept intact for the beauty shots. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, just like with the Nicholas cage version. I mean, just for the shot, that's the real Shelby. And yeah. when he's driving it, it's, it's a clone. Yeah. They right. took, they took a 67, a regular 67 GT and they made a clone out of it. They dressed it up. They did about over 10 of those cars. Damn. Damn. I mean, and, you're not going to destroy the real Shelby, right? No, no. no. And, and that, that's just for the remake, right? Yeah. Okay. It's just shifting back quite uh, back and forth quite a bit, but ho- hopefully everyone's following. <laughs> ho- yeah. Hopefully, I mean, yeah, you're not going to damage the original prize possession. Oh God, matching no. numbers. I mean, yeah, but they they still show both of those cars, right? Like, there's the damaged stunt car and the original uh, beauty yeah. shot Shelby, right? Yeah, the I think the the stunt car that was all smashed up is on display too. That's awesome, and it's yes, the original one from the movie. That's really cool. One thing I also wanted to bring up, too, is that uh, in, in the original Gone in 60 Seconds, uh, I was looking this up, Sak Yamamoto plays himself. He's the, the mayor of Carson City. Right. Yeah. Life. That's interesting. I, I had a feeling that there was some verisimilitude to that scene. I mean, yeah. It, it really does feel like a real politician. It does. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, seriously. And then I heard that the next movie, The Junk Man, Haliki plays a version of himself hollis who's producing the movie gone in 60 seconds in universe uh, that's so meta oh wow that's crazy so it's like meta fiction wow and that, that's going all the way to the original 1974 movie yeah yeah so wow. his, his next movie he plays um it's what is it robert so you know, the junk man didn't come out till like five years after gone to 60 seconds but after the junk man was what was it deadline auto theft and that's pretty much just bone stock footage of the original gone to 60 seconds i like i'm not sure what they were trying to do kind of like yeah almost like a game of death thing you well, know? yeah there, there's a lot of movies from that era that are kind of cobbled together like that yeah. i mean another good example of that is shogun assassin which was a samurai movie and it was cobbled together from all the lone wolf and cub movies oh, so wow i mean and, and not not to mention all the different turkish movies that are literally like just recuts of stock mm. footage from like star wars or really? whatever yeah mm. oh yeah you haven't heard of turkish star wars no i haven't Oh, we need to go into Turkish <laughs> knockoff movies sometime, oh God, man. Turkish. They're they're incredible. <laughs> but but I mean, my point is, yeah, that was a pretty common thing back then. Actually, like it, it was just an easy way to get you know a movie together and out into yeah. the theaters and get it distributed and get it making money and everything. Yeah. 
So, I mean, it's not surprising that they would go around and do that. I looked it up. It's uh, it's Harlan B. Hollis is the character that Haliki plays in The Junk Man. There you go. And and he's basically himself. That's Harlan B. Hollis, H.B. Haliki. He's playing basically just another version of himself, and he's the director, writer, and producer of Gone in 60 Seconds in in the movie. We need to watch that. that yeah, that sounds badass. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, I got to respect the vision, man. Yeah. I mean, this guy was a an auto mechanic, and I'm, I'm guessing... You know, watching Vanishing Point just did that for him, you know, and he just turned it into his own yeah. version. I mean, you could totally tell that just watching the movie. There's just so much love in every scene involving automobiles, you yeah. know, so much love and even care for them, kind of. Like, I mean, it, especially like Eleanor and everything. I mean, it, yeah. it, it being kind of like a white whale for the main character and whatnot. Great white buffalo. And <laughs> I think one thing I think I like more about the original is that uh, over the remake is, is that uh, I want to say it's much more, I don't know, maybe I'm not using this right, but subver- subversive in that showing the relationship between the main character and Eleanor and the elusiveness of this car. It's almost like the remake kind of goes too far to explain that to the audience. Oh, oh, this is his unicorn, blah, blah, blah. Whereas the original Gone in 60 Seconds just shows you that. Yeah, that's if very that makes much any true. sense. Yeah, no. yeah, it, it's very much a show don't tell kind of thing, you know. Save the best for last. Yeah, and, and and that's really what Gone in sixty seconds, the original one, really excels at. I mean, it really just kind of shows you what's up more than anything. Yeah, that's you know? really all it is. Because well, there's not really that much. I mean, well, obviously because of the forty minute chase scene, but not that yeah. much acting going on during the movie. No, especially because like I said, a lot of it in the beginning is all just like a voiced over section of them doing a bunch of stuff, not actually talking, and there's just one person talking over all of that. You know. Yeah, it pretty much just shows you their operation. It shows right. you their modus operandi for While everything. two other characters off screen are having a conversation. Exactly. That's what I mean by voice. It, it's, yeah. a, it's actually no, right. it's All actually it's happening. Yeah. It's actually an excellent way to put forth some exposition. It is a good way because you mean, can talk about it and you can actually see what's going on, but you're not actually seeing the people talk, yeah, but you can see the physical it, in a labor. weird in a weird way they're showing and telling. Yeah. At the same time, which I don't know, you don't really see all that much, you know? Yeah, I was looking on a because it's actually on YouTube. This this movie it, it's got some weird music in it and stuff, but yeah, it, it's on it's on YouTube. But uh, I was looking at the comments and there, it's all the people were saying, you know, oh, they don't make movies like this anymore, you know. Oh, seriously, yeah. I mean, they don't like without a doubt. It's also on Amazon Prime, so if you want to watch it through the uh, the the more legal route and then the better route because it's uh, you know better quality. Yeah, that. Oh, Amazon, certainly. Amazon yeah. Prime. Amazon Prime, baby. Just to throw that out there. There you go. Yeah, we actually have the DVD copy here right, with us. Right, right yeah. here Blu-ray. on the table. Blu-ray edition. Yeah, it's actually a pretty solid Blu-ray, I think. I mean, what, what kind of special features does it have? I don't remember. I need to read it. Special features. Um, There's commentary. Original trailer, uh, rare footage, uh, oh, interviews, nice. uh, POV ride inside Eleanor. Oh, get, wow. Uh, the boys on a joyride, and then Wild takes a set talk. And there's an Easter awesome. egg that shows still a, a still photo version of the extended movie with all the deleted scenes. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's nice. an Easter egg on one DVD copy I, I heard about. So there's, there's, there were quite a few scenes that were cut. It, that hasn't officially publicly been released yet. It's just a DVD extra, an Easter egg. Oh, okay. Well, like, like you actually have to kind of go through the menus to find it Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Yeah. It's funny how DVDs will have Easter eggs like that. Old DVDs. Well, yeah. reminds me of that Dr. Who episode blink. <laughs> you go. that's where I, I guess I find, kind of heard about that for right. the first time but well, yeah but um, no I was impressed with you know the fact that all the the accidents in this movie and the stunts are real and they use real pedestrians and all the cars there you know are, are were owned by Haliki so to me that was that was impressive one thing I heard about too is that there was no official script for the movie either no it's kind of like how Steve McQueen did with Le Mans. You just shoot the car crashes, shoot the chase scene, you shoot the race first, and then we'll worry about the script. Yeah. So basically just build the movie around the actual car chases exactly. and everything itself. I mean, I can kind of get the logic to that because, I mean, that's your meat and potatoes of exactly. a movie like this. I think Steve McQueen's uh, Le Mans, his was like a 48-hour Le Mans race, and that was real footage. Wow, really? And it just no, shot man. that all night, and then after that, it worked around a screen, worked around a play. I think he went through... About three different scripts. Wow. Wow. Trying to make Le Mans right. And yeah, I think that's what you do, right? Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Just shoot the racing first, shoot it all first, and then we'll worry about the script. Nate, 
Wherever the script later, yeah. throw it all together. Yeah. Fuck I mean, it. when you consider the logistics of a movie like this, where you're trying to get all the pieces of automobiles together, all the different cars and everything. That, that, that's your main purpose. I mean, yeah. Right. You're going to spend your time just getting those cars, spend, oh, putting yeah. money into the cars. You that That's the meat of the movie. I mean, yeah. in, in a way, you have to kind of treat them like they're characters in their own right. And that's right. what that's what you definitely get in both of these movies. I yeah. mean, that was absolutely we, his intention, we especially yeah. when he says starring Eleanor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Eleanor as a car has exudes personality. Right. <laughs> you know, you're, you're right. No, she does. And like I said, it's not thrown in your face in the original. It's, it's shown. You see the personality. I, I liked how, you know, the, and this is something I found out too, is that the cast and crew like improvised and ad lib the entire thing is like, you know, like we said, there was no official script. And in fact, the editor, had issues like putting it together because he didn't know what order things. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that, that's definitely another thing indicative of movies at that time is just disorganization. You, you can tell, I think, to some extent because yeah. this movie does feel loosely connected at times. But I like that quality. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you can change it. You can add whatever. You can get rid of whatever you want. I mean, don't matter. Make it your own, right? I guess. There you go. Exactly. All right. Dakota. You have not seen the Nicolas Cage version. I have not. Six, six. I know. Yeah, I have very little input on that because See, I haven't actually seen it. Yeah, that was <laughs> the one. That was the one that I saw first before. Did the, you the original? You showed me a couple of little clips from it, but I haven't yeah. actually seen the whole movie yet. It really is a fun movie altogether, and especially with Nick Cage. Oh, I yeah. mean, you can't go wrong. Nick with Cage makes the movie. But yeah, you yeah. you can't go wrong with Nicolas. Cage. He can pretty much make any movie awesome. There I you think. go. Like like seriously, anything he's in, he makes it awesome. But Especially in even that the character. Sorcerer's Apprentice, yeah, he would make right. that make that. A lot of people talk awesome. shit about that movie. That's why I the, ask you. What about the the Drive Angry movie? They uh, too. that movie is so cool. Two thousand eleven. Uh, a re- rental reviews actually did an episode where they compared Drive Angry to the Nick Cage Gone in sixty Seconds, seconds. movie. Yeah. I don't I don't quite recall which one they actually picked, but I mean they were just like, hey man, they're both Nicolas Cage movies. What do you want? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's kind of bad, but it, it's kind of good. Although I, I kind of think that maybe he's a little more over the top in Drive Angry. Yeah, I mean he's pretty much a messenger from hell, I guess. Yeah. So, but, so I mean that pretty much entails him just going full cage, like not like Mandy he's style. Leading, though. He's leading towards Mandy, I guess. <laughs> well, Ma- Mandy, I think Mandy is his cagiest performance this side of the Wicker Man. There you go. It, it's it's so perfect, but it's actually really good. It's almost like leaving Las Vegas era Nick Cage. In a way, you know, where he's a lot more subtle because, I mean, that movie has a lot more of a slice of life feel to it, kind of, you know, especially in the beginning before, you know, all the shit goes down. I bet you didn't know this has got Christopher Eccleston. Oh, uh, yes. I love Christopher Eccleston. Yeah. Doctor, the doctor. I, I, I was the I was night. watching it, you know, just this morning, actually. I just started Gone yeah. in 60 Seconds Today, the remake. And um, Angelina Jolie, who's somehow less hot because of the hair. I don't know. It just doesn't do it for me. I, she, she's dress. very attractive. But I, in this movie, she I don't know. I don't particularly care for her character in this movie. It, it feels like she's just there to shoehorn in a, a romance. A, yeah, a romance with Nick Cage of all people. It's like why couldn't they have <laughs> put her with with her, but, her but, his brother? But the sex that would have been that would have made more sense. The I sex think. scene is so great though, or the almost oh, sex God. scene where he starts <laughs> just just using car terms as like sex terms. And I don't know if if the movie's self aware in this part and it's, it's making oh, it, it a comedic it, element it, or it, it has to be self aware. I mean, there's just no way all those puns are just coming a mile a minute. I, I'm like, it, it's a it's mile a so minute, bro. God damn it. Pretty much. You're adding to the. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh my God, I did make you didn't a pun, didn't it? I? You didn't even realize you made one. <laughs> Shit, we're, we're like overloading our mics. I don't care. Yeah, it's okay. It's perfect. Damn it. All right, guys. Why don't, you know, why don't, why don't we just start jerking each other off, all right? <laughs> circle jerking it. I mean, <laughs> we're already in a circle. What does that have to do with anything? Well, I just figured since anything goes on this podcast, <laughs> you don't want to say right, though. No holds barred, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, what other old car movies have you guys seen? Bullet. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I've had to show you that. I mean, yeah, you did. Definitely Bullet. I mean, I think I tried to watch Vanishing Point at one time, but I don't know. I didn't really see. I just get that into it. Yeah, I just started going down the list on YouTube like a long time ago. Like Two Lane Blacktop, I still want to. I mean, I watched that on YouTube. Vanishing yeah. Point. I've seen the remake of Vanishing Point with the uh, starring Casper Van Dien. I mean, they they did a remake of that, really? Yeah, there's a remake in the '90s. Oh shit! Yeah. With Casper Van Dien. Casper oh my Van god. Dien. <laughs> 
I mean, when you see him, you kind of just know you're getting straight to DVD shit. Johnny I mean, Rico. Johnny Rico. <laughs> no, nah, fucking uh, Starship Troopers. Shit. Yeah. I'm a man. I mean, that, that's pretty much his only really good movie as far as I know. It's Lieutenant Johnny Rico. I mean, he did a movie of James Dean, too, before Franco did. Oh, he did? Yeah. No way. I don't know. What do you mean, I don't know? You said it, and you said, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. Really. You need to know. I've seen the trailer. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding with you. But Casper Van Dien's pretty cool, though. I, mean, uh, I, I like the Franco James Dean movie. Yeah, that one's badass. Yeah, I, I, I like that one as well. That's a really good movie. Franco James Dean. Time it took you to buy your ticket. Oh, no, no, no. 3.2 minutes. Time it took you to get your popcorn. 2.5 minutes. Time it took them. Oh, let's go, let's go, go. To steal your car. Hello, ladies. 60 seconds. 60 seconds. Move, 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 go. Go, swing, baby, work your magic. Hold on, I know you ain't gonna do what I think you're gonna do. To go old school. A day to shop, a day to prep. Surprise attack. Nice. A little trick I learned at the car thief retirement home. By the time the first car is reported stolen, Almost. your ship sets sail. <laughs> we do this, we do it my way. This was a sucker for a redhead. Okay, let's ride. Gone in 60 seconds. What do you think is more exciting, having sex? Or stealing cars? You know, and, and uh, Halik, he kind of, um, I, I guess, somewhat similar to, to James Dean. I mean, he died because of his his, his passion. His passion, his exactly. Yeah. That's for, the, for, I was the, looking for the art, for the art, bro. They both died in a car crash. And, you know, and, and both of it was, I guess, for the sake of their careers. You know what I mean? Because yeah. Halik, he was filming this movie, actually. And James Dean was, was um, on his way. And, and He was on his way to a race. He was on his way to his race. Yeah. But that, he was, he, just, it, just it was part of his time. persona that he put on all the time because... In order to play the character he did in the movies, he had to be that rebel in real life, right? Yeah, yeah, the the original teenage idol from the fifties. Yeah, I mean, in, in this case, I mean, there's a little bit more gravity toss because I mean, was, what's his name again? He, he was a he was a, the stunt man as well as the main character. Yeah, exactly. In this movie. He, he, he was filming the movie. He was, he was filming uh, the movie and, and putting himself on the line. He there. got injured in the first gun of sixty seconds when they got wrapped around the pole. Oh yeah, he was, he was really injured right there. Oh man, there's there's a lot of car chases and accident scenes in this movie that just throws all abandon out the window. Yeah, I mean, no airbags, nothing. No airbag. Yeah, these these are in old school fucking muscle cars. I mean, with their big ass fucking steel big frames old, and everything. Big old Come on, guys. They got steering wheel. It's a like laps uh, seat belt. What is that gonna do? We, we don't need we're, seriously. We don't need. Uh, airbags? That's for uh, libtard cuck pussies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fucking cucks. We die like real men. Libtards. Yeah, we die like men here. Yeah. Fuck. Well, we need some strap harness. You know any fucking seatbelts like fucking snowflakes? <laughs> <laughs> Might as well take the lap belt off because it's not going to do anything. Right? <laughs> oh my God, Robert. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, you're still going to break your mouth on that steering wheel. Yeah, I mean, it kind of brings me back to uh, Death Proof, you know, Stuntman Mike's car, Yeah, Death Proof itself. I mean, that was a modified stunt car, and I mean, Jesus Christ, man. I mean, what happens to, Ro- was it Rose McGowan? 
It was Rose McGowan. What happened to her in that first uh, kill that he did? Oh, ugh. Man. Yeah. It's like I can't imagine being the guy that actually has to sit in there and film that shit in, in the side of that car, yeah. man. I mean, that's ridiculous. The cameraman side. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm sure it's a lot more streamlined nowadays. They probably have different apparatuses for that. Yeah. But I mean, f- for the most part, at least for exterior shots uh, uh, for the cars and everything, it kind of seems like that hasn't changed a whole lot over the years. Like you literally kind of build this special rig, like with the cameraman yeah. on there, and you, and every, this whole rig's just attached to the front of the car, and you're driving yeah. down the road and everything. A lot of those techniques, I mean, they're you would think that with GoPro and everything that. You know they would change it, but I mean it's still pretty much done the same way. They and still do it the same way. Like yeah, there's I mean, you like got to you got to commend the cameramen for putting themselves on the line as well when they're doing that shit. Oh you man, know? they're moving the camera in just one motion. Sometimes there's three guys attached to that car. Oh, oh ser- in seriously, the back yeah. seat outside the window. There's even like a, a box. And, and, and back then, you know, before they had those advancements, dude, that must have been brutal. Oh yeah. Then you got the car in front of them. Yeah. And behind them, shooting the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of coordination that goes into filming those types of scenes. You're right, you know? yeah. and and this was a, this was an independent movie. Yeah, so no retakes, right? I mean, oh, I wreck imagine the car, you wreck the car I mean, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You only got one shot when you're smashing these cars. Right? So I, that's a quality you don't. I guess you don't see a lot anymore. Is um, was it one shot, one kill? You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it, it's all done, and you know, it's all one shot. So I, I mean that's that's impressive because you have to have skill, you have to have finesse, and if you'll notice, you know the car chase scene that was all Haliki himself. You right. know what I mean? He put himself in there. It's like yeah. Nicholas Cage. I mean, he did yeah. all the driving too. Did he? I mean, he did what he could. Right. One in the you chamber. Know, that was that's of, the phrase a lot of him though. One in the chamber. You know what? T- I mean, talking about uh, shooting those types of uh, car chases and everything, it brings to mind that one Burt Reynolds movie, which was the one where oh, he was just on there. Oh, what was it? Hooper? Hooper. Yeah. It, it actually goes in depth in how a, a scene like that is shot, yeah. like in the be- behind the scenes. And I mean, it's really remarkable. It's and, the whole Hollywood stuntman life in the and, 70s. And, and, and Hooper, that movie really nailed that particular type of job like perfectly. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of like I almost want to see more movies about stunt people and, and about what they go through. Once upon a time in Hollywood, we haven't seen yet. But. Yeah. I mean, you know, they still don't give out Academy Awards for stunt teams and stunt right. choreography what? and whatnot. Bullshit, dude. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I'm pretty sure that they still don't to this day. That's crazy. I mean, that's like that's like basically the pit crew for for actors. You know yeah. I mean? yeah. Right. Those are the people that make you look good. Exactly. I mean, and, and I mean, they don't even really have anything for digital actors, I think, you know, for oh. mocap. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, stunt people need more recognition in, right. in the Hollywood system, I think. I, I, mean, I would agree. They're, they're kind of the unsung heroes of many movies. And, and I mean, and they still they still die all the time. I mean, even in the Dead Deadpool 2 movie, there was a stunt person that passed away in an really? accident. Really? Really? Yeah. Even as recent as that. Well, yeah, yeah Deadpool two. I, I would believe it. There were some crazy stunts that's in that why, movie. That's why they don't yeah. get coverage, dude. Because people people die. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, I I mean, we can't talk about car chases without talking about Bonnie and Clyde because that's actually where some of the early tropes of car chases kind of came from. Like like for one, that old bluegrass music playing during a car chase. That's pretty much where that begins right there, hmm. you know, and, and and that was done in old timey cars from like the 20s and 30s, right? Yeah. yeah that, that's with uh, Faye Dunaway and uh, what's his name? Nick Nolte? No, not Nick Nolte. Uh, what's his name? Warren Beatty. Warren Beatty. There you go. Warren Beatty. Yeah, he started his career in the 60s, I think. Yeah. Jeez. I mean, car chases in general, I mean, I they, they do pretty much add a lot to certain movies. I mean, in some movies, they're kind of just perfunctory, you know? Right. Remember that original black and white Fast and the Furious you picked up? Oh, that's right. Dude, that, yeah. was, that was like 1941, dude. Yeah, that, that's the uh, Roger Corman. I remember seeing movie. that and, you know, it was in black and white and a, a lot of the a lot of the background was just like a screen, you know? Yeah. I mean, you can barely see it, though, but you can tell. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's kind of where car movies in general, or car exploitation as you yeah. know it, I think that's kind of where that, that started, really. The original 
Fast and the Furious, which were done in like Jaguars. And yeah, it, it, it's amazing that that got turned into a massive multi-billion dollar blockbuster, right? We'll have to do Fast and Furious as soon as, a, as, soon yeah, as yeah, as soon as Vin Diesel reached it, then yeah, yeah. Paul Walker. I, I yeah. was gonna tell you earlier when you mentioned the whole old movies, I was like, you know, I've never seen an old car movie, but I have seen Fast and the Furious. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the original was 1941, Fast and Furious, black and go. white, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. hell yeah. And that was a remake. I mean, yeah, the, the Paul Walker one is a definitely a remake. But how they stretched that out to, like, what, almost 10 of them is beyond me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're, we're coming on uh, FF9. Yeah. On F and F9. It's like, it's god damn, we got John Cena in this shit oh now. Oh, god. <laughs> it is John Cena! Now, his acting is shit. I, I just, I just got to ask, when is the Fast and Furious series going to be in space? I, was, I think I was just going to say that. Yeah, when, when is, when is it going to be in space? Shit, you're what, fucking right, dude. That is the next logical step for you. You're the right. Mm. Leprechauns went in space. Why can't we have cars Leprechaun in space? Leprechaun in space. Leprechaun Jason in space. X. We had we Jason. had Jason X. Jason X, dude. Yeah. <laughs> what, else, what else are we doing? <laughs> Shit, man. We should have Nightmare on Elm Street in uh, space. Oh, that'd be great. Michael Myers go to space. We'll I don't think they'll Chucky. have uh, cars in space. They'll probably be on a different planet, like you know, cars in the moon or some shit. Yeah, they'll they'll find a way to a moon base somehow. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> or or some type of satellite, the, the International Space Station. There, there you, go. you go. Now this is pod racing. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> it's working. Episode it's one. It's working. There, now there's a car chase for you. The there pod, you go. The pod racing from fucking Phantom Menace. Mm, that yeah. was cool. I remember seeing that at the movies too. And, and playing the video game, right? For yeah. 60, oh, 64. yeah, yeah. The N64 pod racing game. Yeah. Oh, like that the, was classic. Lego Star Wars segment where uh, the level that's the pod racing level. Yes. <laughs> that was fun. I, I, I still feel like I've memorized that. Like I've committed it to memory. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Me too. Absolutely. <laughs> 100%. What about those born race, born to race movies I showed? I think I showed Dakota that. that yeah, that I, you showed me that. I don't think you've shown those. It's basically to me yet. Mustang versus Subaru. You know, muscle versus import. Kind of like what Fast and the Furious is. Yeah, yeah. Don't shit all over the import. Just Honestly, to, though, whenever I think of movies, Robert, that you show me, I think of that. You show me this one movie, actually, multiple of them. There was the what was it? There was a truck driver and he was killing a bunch of teenagers. Oh, that was a. Joyride three, Joyride, and it had a Subaru. You show me Joyride, it had dude. A Subaru there STI was a Subi in it. Yeah, you you mentioned the Subi. Yes. Yeah, that that reminds me of that was cool as shit. That Joyride. reminds me of what's actually technically another kind of car chase movie, if you want to call it a uh, duel. Steven Spielberg's original, uh, basically Jaws for trucks movie that he oh, made back in the day. It has dude, the the trucker are, that's uh, just randomly trying to chase down that one family or whatever yeah, that couple. Even scary movies. There's a lot of car movies that are like. Cars that are haunted, like I've Chris, seen that. Christine. Christine, yeah. yeah, and of course, I guess you could put the Hitcher up there with yeah. with uh, Rutger Hauer. Yeah, that is pretty wild. Okay, well, so, Joyride does that count then? <laughs> as a um, car, car, car exploitation genre. Yeah. What about like uh, Mad Max? No, yeah, it falls. It also falls under the apocalyptic. Yeah, uh, you, genre you know and car exploitation genre. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Mad Max Fury Road is pretty much just one long car chase. Yeah, it that's is. the Mad Max, that's the one that I've seen. See, it's yeah. Mad Max and then Road Warrior. So. Yeah, I mean, to be all fair, mo- most all those Mad Max movies are car chase movies, yeah. Yeah. pretty much. Which, uh, what is it? He has the, the Ford Interceptor right at the end of the first Mad Max, right? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, the Australian Ford Fairlane. Ooh. I watched a lot of Hawaii Five-0, and they're using that Camaro. Yeah, they're chasing people in that SS. It's beautiful. Ooh. There's a lot of car chasing in that one. Probably an LS5 uh, model or something. Something out of a Corvette motor. Right? Yeah, I see, I don't know what's in the uh, the original uh, Hawaii 5 TV show. I don't know what car they drive in that, but I know in the new one it's a Camaro. And it's beautiful. Oh, my God. Uh, Transformers? Yeah, there you and, go. Transformers. I didn't even uh, think about that. Oh, oh my I t- God. I totally forgot. Like There was more than car movies back in the 70s. There was car TV shows like Starsky yeah. and Hutch. And Starsky and Hutch. I mentioned that. Yeah, Night Rider, Night Rider, Night Rider, the 80s with David Hasselhoff. <laughs> Night yeah. Rider is the penultimate. Also, A Team, the Dukes of Hazard, the A Team, oh, Dukes yeah. of Hazard, definitely. Dukes what about Hazzard. Speed Racer? Yeah, that was a cartoon of the 60s. I think it was, was a, a cartoon, a right? German car, uh, cartoon. No, it's it's also, Japanese. It's anime. It's anime. Bro. It is Japanese. It's anime. That's anime, bro. Yeah, I don't Sorry. know what you guys are talking about. It was about. also turned into a movie too. You know, it, they don't understand. It was this, turned into a movie. Yeah, I, I've yeah. seen that. The, the, the Wachowski sisters did that. I've and seen the movie. Yeah, it was weird. It, it's actually kind of a cult classic now. Is because, it really? Yeah, because of pretty much its stylistic choices and everything. It was very stylistic. I remember yeah. seeing a long time ago. It, it also just how the racing scenes were kind of 
like plotted out it and was, how they were shot. It and was everything. almost like the cartoon, and like you were watching Space Jam or something. Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. A weird Space Jam go. <laughs> well, <laughs> as car movies go, you showed me a uh, Baby Driver. That's another car Baby movie Driver. Show. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that that kind of feels that kind of feels like a modern it's, day kind of car exploitation movie in a way, right? It's yeah, El Gort. Actually, kind of a doing a lot of remakes of the original Driver. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, so speaking of, could we possibly put Drive in this category as yeah, well? Yeah, because uh, it's, it's all Riffin? based. It's all based off that same book, Drive the Driver, Driver. Yeah, but driver. Yeah. what yeah. about Pixar's Cars? Cars. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that's pretty much. In, in some ways, a love letter to that particular genre of movies in its own right. What I mean, Herbie, it, it, po- Herbie, oh, Herbie yes. oh, that's right, <laughs> fucking Herbie, <laughs> Lindsay Lohan, Lindsey Lohan. <laughs> oh no, no, before go, the drugs. Go, go back to the original <laughs> Herbie back yeah. in the day, yeah. the Love Bug. The 60s, oh yeah, Love Bug. Yeah, yeah. yeah. talking about the original. There you go, the Lohan. The yeah, yeah. Talk, talk about giving Lohan. a car personality, man. I mean, <laughs> no, they, did, yeah. they, they literally made Herbie into a character. There you go. Like an actual living, like, breathing, living, breathing moving, entity. Yeah. Blinking. <laughs> yeah. Wait, with, with actual sentience and everything. <laughs> there you That's go. It's special. Like, Pixar's cars did a whole movie with characters. That yeah. Are cars, okay. Fuck, they so, made fucking Jared Leto a car. So, Not Jared Leto. What's his name? <laughs> uh, Jay Leno. Jay Leno. Jay Leno. Jay Leno. Jay Leno. Jay Leno. Right. I think he's Jay Limo or, or he, something. He's Jay Limo. Yeah. Well, he, he's very such, close he's such a huge car nut that they Jared had to put him in. They're very close. He's got one of the biggest collections. Like, yeah, he, he's got a massive classic like, car collection. Like Jerry Seinfeld's got one of them collections, too. <laughs> really? No way. He's got a Porsche collection. Ooh, and Porsche. Jay Leno's got, like, anything you can think of. Anything. Yeah. Well, wow. they made him into a car. I think they made him into a Hummer, I think. I think that's what it was, wasn't it? It was something. <laughs> wow. He knows his shit about cars. Yeah. So does H.P. Holocaine. Yes, he does. Yeah, most certainly. Also, was a mechanic, so turn that love into... Into a reality, I guess. What about the variety of cars? You know that they that they end up stealing the forty eight different cars. The forty eight different cars. See, a lot of them focused on. See, they took like nine Rolls Royce, right? Did you see that? Every other car was a Rolls Royce. It was. Or it was a a Cadillac. Cadillac, It was a Cadillac, and And they were supposed to limousines too. Yeah, I think they took like a Ford Bronco from the seventies, and I saw this Pantera car, which I hadn't seen in a freaking long time, and. uh Few Cadillac Eldorados, right? And how many limos? They they took a, they took like seven limos. Did, didn't they? Didn't they also take a hearse somewhere along yeah. the line? I don't remember. I do remember like the Ford Seven, whatever the fuck limos though. I thought that was odd. Yeah, that was yeah, that's a lot. A limos and then Rolls Royces. Yeah, and the fact that they had to steal Eleanor like three different times in the movie. Yeah, see, the Eleanor car was giving them a problem. Yeah, yeah. It was. there were four Eleanors. There were four yeah, Eleanors. There, there, was, there was a bunch of them because none of them were insured, but. No. There was the first one 
which they pick that originally the woman is inside of it, and then they right. go to the house and the oh, they were gonna take that at the airport, easy yeah. Trip. And then that lady, that old lady, was right inside, yeah. And then the second one is kind of acquired without much explanation. No, it wasn't. And then the third one, at it, that, the second one, they end up having to return because it's not insured hours before the shipment. Exactly. And then the third one at International Towers, and then the fourth one, he just smoothly finds after wrecking the third yeah, one after wrecking in, the in a car wash. It was like just, just in a car wash. It just swaps it out like a mother motherfucking boss. That was perfect. That was clean. He did that. Absolutely. Smooth. There, there Changes his disguise. Off, takes his, and, Not only and that, but off. the cops have a suspect who is looks or follows the... The matches the description, matches the description of, of by the time the cops figure that out, like? he's already gone. But exactly, he's, he's already gone. They, there's nothing dead. to figure out. He's genius because they're not going to look for him because he's got a, a not a damaged car but a fully renewed car, right? And he doesn't look anything like the suspect, so he's scot free. Yep, <laughs> that was genius. Yeah, but. definitely. Uh, one, one aspect that I think we really need to talk about here is how the actual car theft is portrayed in this movie in both movies oh, well i'm actually. ready to go steal a car now i know how to do oh, that. honestly oh, though honestly, like yeah, yeah watching this it makes me really think i could walk up to somebody and steal their damn car well i'm, yeah. I'm sure that i'm sure in many ways it would have been a lot easier back in the 70s oh so, yeah obviously you know oh, yeah. i mean most of the time they didn't even need to break into these cars i mean it was literally more just like a con that they pulled in order it usually to, was especially with like the limo companies and, and the last eleanor of course just yeah yeah the airport is still a car like they were driving off of Rolls Royces. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was so fucking easy. It's like, jeez, they leave the keys in the ignition. <laughs> well, he was like, uh, what is it? One in 10 that the keys won't be in there. And he says, I'll take that bet. And he goes in there. But in, that. In, in the remake, you see that they have a lot of pride in their work. Like there's that one guy, like he almost gets carjacked, and then he like beats him. He beats the carjacker down. And is like, man, you got no class, man. Yeah. What about the old lady with the umbrella who beats the shit out of the car, the Eleanor and the cop? Car? <laughs> yeah, that's another one right there. And then there. she comes Seriously. back, lady, and she says, "You guys ruined my perfectly good umbrella." Oh my God. <laughs> well, I mean. It, in the remake, it just undercuts how they really feel about what they do. Yeah, you know, I mean, he's just like, man, you need you need a role model, like straight up, dude. It's in the new one. It's basically a lost art by now. Uh, yeah, you definitely. Know? It's like any idiot with a gun can walk up yeah. and take a fucking car. It's like they had an appreciation. They appreciated somebody who can steal a car in under sixty seconds. You see the way Nick Cage got into the Shelby though. Yeah, with, with like a a toothpick and a freaking. Yeah, it was so easy. Dude, yeah, you did that quick without damaging the locking mechanism. <laughs> Dude, in and out, gone. In and out, gone. In 60 yeah. seconds. In 60. So do, in the remake, do they elaborate more on why it's called Gone in 60 Seconds? Because they don't really, I mean, they, they show it a few times in the movie, but they don't really explain why it's called. it takes, gone. do you see how fast they were hot wiring those cars? Yeah, I think, I guess that's able, what it was, was yeah. the speed at which it takes to hot wire the car. Out. That's what it looked like, in I out, assume. Gone okay. Seconds. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's referring to a basic statistic that law enforcement refers to about the average time it takes to steal a car, right? Yeah. Well, there you go. Okay, I think that makes more sense. I mean, and, and yeah, it is usually that simple. It is. You know what you're doing. But but like I said, nowadays with some of the more newfangled theft devices on some of these cars that they have nowadays. It's like a lot more than 60 seconds, my friend. I would imagine so. <laughs> but then, but again, imagine but so, then yeah. again, who knows? I mean, with a little bit of hacking True. nowadays, it's like, yeah. you could probably you know, Automated cars, you have no idea what you'd be able to do. Yeah, car thieves are just going to have to become hackers. <laughs> I mean, that's Honestly, really though, what it's going to have to be. Mm. Perfect. Yeah, seriously. You'd have to get new keys cut around an ECU and just plug it in. Right? Yeah. And there, it, there'll always be a way to crack it. Well, I mean, it's most cars nowadays that you they use key fobs now. You're right. You know, I mean, you have to think that there would be some way to kind of hack that. There'll always be a way. You can only, you can increase security as much as you want, but somebody will always find a way to exploit it. Yeah, Well, yeah, true. you can always it's get around it somehow. I mean, there, you can't literally block everybody from everything. There's a way yeah. to get to something. There's a way to bypass it. There's a way to bypass it. There's some firewall that you can finally get through. I mean, you can get past it. You just got to find the loopholes. You got to find how. Do we know how? I don't know. Do we? Do we? <laughs> Days of Thunder. Days of Thunder. Yeah, there you Did go. I that's show a, you that? That's an actual NASCAR-based yeah, movie, right? Tom Cruise in that movie. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Talladega Nights. Ballad of Ricky Bobby. Oh, you yeah. You, we, we can't go <laughs> yeah, without Talladega Nights. Talladega Nights. Without Talladega Nights. We, we got to refer to that. At man. least a little I bit mean, of reference. I want to uh, see Tommy Wiseau do a car movie. That would be great. About that. <laughs> yeah, they'd be t- t- totally do a tribute to the Dean, man. Like, seriously. Oh, oh, he has to. Yeah, he has to. 
I mean, he, he would be perfect for a car movie, what right? Was that Selena Gomez? Movie? That's what I was gonna the, say. It was in my head. It was the, the top of my the tongue, getaway. Robert. The getaway. The getaway. The getaway oh, what was that guy's oh, name? Oh yeah. Uh, fuck. How did Ethan you know? Hawk. Ethan Hawke. Ethan Hawke. How did you know that's the movie I was gonna say, dude? I mean, it's in my head. I'm like sitting here. I'm like, what is it? Selena Gomez. Yeah, I I, yes. re I remember Robert showing that. I showed movie you that. To me. I saw it when it came out. That was the stupidest shit. Selena Gomez. Comes Selena Gomez is she, his part is shit. Oh, though. what the fuck? No. This little girl trying to be a thief. That was the worst. Yeah, that did not fucking strain my suspension of disbelief in any way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Seriously. That was so funny that you happened to guess the movie I was I was already thinking of. That was inside your head. You before, were in my head, Robert. Before you were. Sorry. Oh, my God. It's God okay. damn it, Robert. It's okay. In this day and age, who needs privacy, right? Who needs privacy? Indeed. Indeed. So, what else? I say go to final thoughts. I like the sound of that. Really, car movies. I, I just think there's more that we're not like listing, really. But well, how, how about Corvette Summer? Oh, we did see that with Mark Hamill and Annie with Potts. Right? Mark Hamill and Annie Potts. Exactly. That was a good one. That was something I had to show you too. Yeah, that was really cool. I mean, what what was the model of Corvette that they were? Um, it was they like, had that movie. It what was year? Seventy like three Stingray. You know what I mean? Nice. Hell and yeah! And they put a their own. Body kit over that, right? And, and saw that? Annie Potts had that rad uh, van, right? Yeah, she had that little shagged and wagon van. Dude, that was so cool, man. I, I wish <laughs> I wish shag and wagons would kind of make a comeback because those are fucking sweet. Smoking the Bandit, pretty cool. Burt yeah. Reynolds, is that a, is that a, is that a car movie? Yeah, yeah. She's smoking yeah, the yeah. Bandit. There was that, like that's three considered. of those. There was three of those movies. Only the first one really matters. Sorry. Yeah, the first one is so awesome. I mean, they're they're, it's, they're pretty much bootlegging, right? Yeah, they're bootlegging their shit ton of beer, bootlegging Coors Light from uh, what Georgia to Texarkana? Oh, uh, Grand Torino. That's bootlegging Grand Torino. Clint Eastwood. Well, Clint Eastwood. I, yeah, I can't say I've ever seen that movie. See, his car is a Grand Torino, but there's not really racing in it. It's just it shows him just like is it really beating the shit out of a? I guess of, it's just a car movie, really. Yeah, not it's a car anything. chase movie. Not At a the, car chase. It's a car movie. No, it's just yeah. The Grand Torino is like his prized possession, and he's like a Vietnam veteran. <laughs> is Back to the Future technically? Yeah, technically a car chase. Need for Speed too. Need for, I was gonna say Need for Speed, but I, I I meant to say Back to the Future. But Back yeah. to the Future. Well, yeah, I mean you gotta appreciate <laughs> you gotta appreciate the DeLorean. The De exactly. Back, now Back to yeah. the Future is definitely not a car chase movie, but it is a, it's a car movie. It's, it's a, a car. Movie. It's a car based movie. Yeah, there you go. You know, it, it's it's surrounding a car, but it's really a time machine. But I mean, it's funny that they used a DeLorean for that. Yeah, you know, especially in knowing what happened to the actual owner of that company, DeLorean. DeLorean. Yeah, yeah he he got caught with a lot of cocaine. Okay. Was, <laughs> Lots was, of cocaine. He was funding his car business. Cocaina. All yeah. that. All that. Uh, After they caught him, the uh, all that Holly. They stopped making <laughs> DeLorean. Really? Uh, yeah, I mean, after that, his company pretty much folded. But, I mean, it gave us one of the most iconic movie cars of all time. In cinema history. Oh. Yeah, seriously. So are those hard to find now? Oh, they Robert. are. I found a list online. Oh. They are. What, 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 is, uh, what does the, the list the say? The, the best car chases movies. Is the SCIC gone in 60 seconds? What about the Blues Brothers? Oh, that's oh, right. The car chase in the There was the a mall. whole chase in the freaking Blues Brothers. Yeah, in in right. the fucking mall, bro. All right. To live yeah. and die in LA? I don't think I ever saw that one. I don't one. think I've seen that either. The Rock? The Rock. It's a uh, Connery and Cage destroying San Francisco. Okay, hold on. Uh, against yeah. all odds, Fast that. Five is on here, of course. Seen Fast Five. I the like French Connection. Yeah, I guess I guess the French Connection oh. is kind of a car has a good car chase in it, doesn't it? Smoking the Bandit, of course. Yeah. You know the first Jack Reacher had that car chase with the the Chevelle, kind of like from Drive Angry. What's up, uh, Doc? Yeah, that's a movie apparently. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. 1972. These are all old movies. That's why I'm listening. I'm Dirty Mary, Crazy Larry. Yeah, that's another one we're referencing, like Vanishing Point, Dirty Mary, Crazy Larry. Oh, yeah. You know, what What's that movie like? Like I've actually seen that movie referred to a lot, like yeah. on YouTube. You'll hear it referred like, in uh, Death Proof. Yeah, they yeah. There you go. Up. Yeah, they they kind of brought that up as kind of a influence on Death Proof, right? Yeah. Because I mean, that's total car exploitation all the way. Like, e even if you look at the trailers, there, it's got all the exploitation elements to it. It's basically a sort of a Bonnie and Clyde natural born killers yeah. theme. Yeah, I mean, maybe natural born killers can kind of. I mean, that's kind of got a car element to it, right? Yeah. I mean, at least when uh, they're chasing Mickey and Mallory Knox throughout the on, on their killing spree and everything. I mean, yeah. they they they're out on the road. So, I mean, it's kind of a road movie in a way. 
Switching cars. I don't, I don't know. Can we call road movies like kind of car movies in a way or no? Road movies? Yeah, I guess you can. Right? Kind of, sort of. Like the first road trip movie <laughs> <laughs> with Tom Green Ford, and uh, Ford Wagon or whatever the hell that thing was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're pretty much just driving to that chick's college or whatever. Boston. Boston, Texas. To Austin, Texas. Oh, yeah. There, there we go. <laughs> Boston, Texas. Really? The University of Boston in Massachusetts. I don't I don't know. I'm pretty sure that Boston wouldn't be that far removed from being in Texas. Like, if it's it was in good. Texas, it would, like, be... It fit right in. It would fit right in. Yeah. You mean Austin, Texas. Austin, Austin, Texas. Boston. <laughs> yeah. No, Austin, Texas. Yeah, I, I don't know. Keep Austin weird, I guess. That's freaking funny. I guess we should go ahead and start wrapping things up, right, guys? Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Rip, rip it, hey, it's very up. important to keep it wrapped. Oh, uh, yeah. Keep it double wrapped. <laughs> well, you know, I... Yeah, yeah. Let, let's, okay, no one I've, made a, I've made a hobby out of fucking Robert's mom. So. Oh, oh, Jesus oh, really? Christ. I knew that was because uh, your mom can't stop looking at me. Uh, uh, la- ladies and gentlemen, I'm so sorry for this. She, I, she wants me to take you on the weekends. But I, I I'm don't. so sorry for all of this. Well, thanks thanks <laughs> for mean, taking these, care of my mom, Robert. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> these two have this weird thing going on with insulting moms. I, I don't know. <laughs> we're not insulting. We're respecting each other's We moms. respect each this other's is, mothers. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. I, yeah. I'm stand corrected. This is total <laughs> respect. For respect, people's moms. Respect for women, yeah. yeah I respect none total. of them. Total. Okay. My mother was a single mother at the age of 26. I respect mothers. Yeah, well, there you go. All right, guys. Final thoughts. Let's go ahead and start with Robert. Okay. Course. So, my final thought, I'm not giving my final thought. I want to ask you guys, what is your guys' dream cars? Oh, okay. That's, that's probably one of the. Any, the whole thing anything with low mileage, decent gas mileage, and could get me from point A to point B. All right, Boo. shut the fuck up. I want Camaro. That doesn't exist. I'm it doesn't sorry. exist. Oh, God you damn it. You are reaching for the stars. Oh, God damn it. Uh, as an import, it's a Subi. If it's a muscle, my Camaro. Camaro. Yeah. I mean, it depends. Like, I want a 67 Camaro, but I also want, like, a new Camaro because, oh, my God. They're, they're a lot faster now with the, the 500 horsepower motors. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, I'm going to have to say... Like a Tesla. Automated cars are the future, and I love technology. So I'll just get you a Fair Prius enough. with a string on it. We, <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's oh, a, no. basically a tampon. Hey, no, I'll give him no. a little bucket. You know, automated Put it on car. a skateboard, Mine. tie it to the back of my car, my truck, and then he can have a vehicle. <laughs> Test, dude, look, look at that, uh, you know, like tes- Tesla Model X, Tesla Model S. You're never going to have a Tesla. Just, you know. No. Okay. No, drop your you know what? Now. You know what? I'm I, I'm so bad at driving. It would probably benefit me. Probably would. Uh, yeah, you probably, one of those uh, soft driving Audis. Yeah, yeah. Ash, you probably don't need to have a dream car. <laughs> you know <laughs> what? Though you don't I have something that you've been <laughs> reaching for the stars your whole life. I, I've always liked Camaros as well. I like Dakota. Well, you know what this thing is, right? It's the Camaro Killer. So the, it's the mm, rival. Yeah, whatever, the Mustang, so. uh-huh. the Trans Am series. Yeah, I do look, want look a vet. Look it up. I would like a, a Corvette. That would be good too. Yeah, they're lighter and faster. <laughs> Robert, what's your dream car? Well, now that I, on my way to getting it back, but it wasn't my first choice. But you know, it kind of picked me from a scrap mm-hmm. pile of junk. Guess, right on. I guess you call it destiny, right? So, so you already had your dream car, and I've never driven it. My, oh wow! I mean, I've had. You know what? I wanted the Shelby five hundred, but then I got the second best thing the the nineteen seventy Mach one. You know. 
Yeah. Which nice. is that fell into my lap about over fifteen years ago. Well, dug, dug it out of the ground in Poteet, Texas. You know, paid five hundred bucks for it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, you can see a lot of those type of cars on Facebook now, Oof. like for sale for like three or f- three to five hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. See, it was a steal. The guy was offering. He wanted a thousand. Nowadays, the bodies go over like eight grand. I picked it up for five hundred. So like, jeez, <laughs> man. Fuck me, that was a steal, dude. Yeah. No Crazy. kidding. But anyway, how about final thoughts from Ash? What are your final thoughts on this movie? Oh, uh, I think Gone in sixty seconds. Um, it it remains largely influential, I think, to the car genre. It remains largely influential to the car genre as a whole, or, or the car chase genre, I should say. Like I said before, I, I really have to respect the vision. I have to respect the idea. We we're kind of you know building ourselves up from from the ground up here yeah. at Collateral Cinema, you know, starting you know our own thing, and so these aspiring filmmakers, indie filmmakers, low budget, you know, that's that's what impresses me the most. So to take this movie, which is in all effect is basically a low budget movie, except for the fact that he put all the budget into the fucking cars, uh, all of which he owned or built or bought. So yeah, honestly, I, I, I really, I really enjoyed it. I was really blown away. Yeah. I wish it was something we all could have just sit down and watch together, especially the Nicolas Cage version. Yeah. That's definitely a fun get together kind of movie. It's like, yeah, we need to, yeah. because there was a lot of shots in that from like, I mean, a lot of shots all together from the old and the remake uh, were shots from Steve McQueen's bullet, you know? Yeah, yeah. So we kind of go back to the original Chase movie, which was Steve McQueen's. And a lot of those shots are there today, even, you know, other movies that they're doing now. Yeah, know? those same techniques, the those, same same, technique, yeah. those same types of uh, camera yeah, like positioning what, and everything. When I watched yeah. Brian Gosling in Drive, you know, that scene where, you know, he's got the GT and then... You know, they shoot the dude and he leaves it with the money. A lot of that was referenced to Steve McQueen, too. Yeah. And, I mean, you can see it in the Need for Speed movie with Aaron Paul, you know. A lot of it was there. Right on. Dakota, what are your final thoughts? Well, I did not see the remake, so I can't really talk about Nicolas Cage as much as I would like to talk about Cage. Yeah. But... I did have a lot of fun watching the original. I didn't know what was going on at first, to be completely honest with you. It took me a second to kind of figure it out. I mean, I knew, I figured out, you know, the idea that, okay, they were still in cars and changing up plates. I understood, but I didn't go, idea, I had no clue of what was going to actually happen in the story, that there was going to be this amazing car chase. And I really liked the way it turned out. Car chase was beautiful. The The fact that it was real, real life stunts, that, that really blew my mind because it was always one guy and he's fantastic and talented. And I think this is a great movie. Certainly. Yeah, definitely. Uh. Well, anyway, it's time to go ahead and do our plugs, of course. Collateral Cinema will be doing our anniversary episode up next, and we are talking about another Takashi Miike movie because that's going to be our tradition every anniversary. Miikiversary. It's it's our Miikiversary. Exactly. And we are talking about his classic straight-to-video digitally shot freak out movie visitor Q. And guys, I am really, really looking forward to showing you guys this movie. I, I like, started searching it up already. And in this movie, if this movie is as weird as I've read it to be, Oh, <laughs> it, it is incredible. It's classic Mike. I mean, it, it has all the different notes that you find in his movies and even more. I mean, there's going to be some stuff like even just the way it opens, like you guys are just going to be like, what does it open with? Come, oh, each of the killer does. <laughs> each of the killer does, but th- this one gets pretty close. All Let's right, just right, put it that enough. way. But yeah, that's a it's an awesome movie. I have it in my collection, and that will be our next episode, which will be coming very very soon. Uh, collateral, collateral gaming, collateral gaming. Yes, collateral gaming. Where you can find us in all of your wherever you find your yeah, podcasts. What's what's coming up with collateral gaming, guys? Fine, you go. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is going to be our next episode. We're introducing a couple of guest hosts on. Um, we're trying, you know, some people out to be a full-on co-host. So that's what we're excited about. We'll be premiering that next month. We don't really have anything planned within the two-week mark, which is where we have normally be doing, like, our indie games and whatnot. Yeah. We're going to kind of focus on um, maybe getting some of the Patreon content out and the uh, catching up on the video podcasts. But, uh, yeah, we're super stoked about that. 
Uh, expect Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order next month. And yeah, like Dakota said, you can uh, you can find us wherever you find Collateral Cinema. Follow our personals too, all of our Instagrams, whatever the hell you want to yeah, find. Definitely, yeah, definitely, and. It all. And definitely check out our Patreon pages for both Collateral Gaming and Collateral Cinema. You will find exclusive content there. Yes. On Collateral Gaming, we have we have Let's Plays that Ash and Dakota do as uh, well. Yeah, there's totally Let's Plays up. <laughs> there are. There's, there's one out. There's one. Yeah, y'all still got to get some out. That's fine. We're working on it. That's Patreon content. And, so and and on our Patreon on Collateral Cinema, we have several full length feature commentary tracks featuring yours truly and the boys here. We did a uh, bullet is one of them. Yes, bullet, which is we one mentioned of them. in this episode. Yeah, plenty of times. Plenty of times. Yeah, definitely Ooh. check that one out. We have we have tiers starting out at one dollar and going up to at least five dollars. And also on Apple Podcasts, give both of our shows a five star rating and a review. If there's a movie that maybe you want us to check out, uh, say leave a five star review and say so in the actual comment for the review. So, I mean, that way we can start kind of interacting with our listeners and we can kind of maybe have them have a hand in creating our content a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're definitely looking forward to both podcasts. Yeah, yeah. or just messages personally, really. Movies yeah, and exactly. video games, you can message us as well. Um, yeah, but the five-star reviews will definitely bring us up in the rankings a little more on Apple Podcasts and everything. Yeah, it's um, it's kind of like a symbiotic relationship. Yeah. So, you know, you so, scratch so, our back, we uh, scratch your nuts. And also, find us on Podchaser and give us a rating and review there. Podchaser is a website that's starting to kind of gain a little grounding. I mean, I, I hope it's not going to be another Podcoin. That, that's just ah, my that's only hope. Oh, I miss Podcoin so much yeah. already. I, I miss that app. I mean, hopefully it won't be anything like that. It's more like an IMDb for podcasts yeah. and everything. But and yes, you can definitely find all of us, uh, our personal accounts and our collateral cinema and collateral gaming accounts there. So give us a rating and review there, and you can also listen to us from there. Robert, this is your episode. You want to take a moment to plug what's coming up for uh, the future? Ortegon Studios? I don't know. Ortegon Studios? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a tentative name, I guess. Project name. It's in the making. Yeah. Yeah, it's in the no name stage. <laughs> <laughs> Untitled, I guess. What are you working on? I got a uh, Killing Night coming out. Killing Night's pretty much done already. I just need to give it to you guys to film or uh, edit, do the editing, and also Sorry. a score and everything. Exactly. Yeah, we I gotta. Mean, we I'm gotta. Gonna, I'm gonna show it to you guys right after this because I already got it finished. Fuck yeah, right. dude! I'm yeah. I'm down. Right on. And uh, and after that, what? After that is Paranoid, mm -hmm. and I'm almost done with the ending to that. So fuck yeah! Hopefully nice. we, we can just jump right into that. Yeah, we're we're definitely looking forward to working on that. It was a lot of fun working on Killing Night. Like yours truly did most of the camera work there, which was a lot of fun. Yeah, we both did. Yeah, it, it, that I mean, was you great. did a lot of work too. I mean, it, it, it was great. Huh? I think I was more focused on uh, cinematography wise. Yeah, like, opening it up like John Carpenter. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. But. Yeah, I guess we did work on four minutes and 30 seconds. It took us, what, two years almost? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Shit, dude. Yeah. You need to get your uh, Mustang up and running so we can do a car movie, Robert. Yeah, yeah definitely. Get, going, definitely. get all these cars will be good. Well, anyway, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. You can find us wherever you find your podcast, but mainly check us out on Spotify and Apple Podcast. And look forward to our next episode. It's going to be quite interesting so anyways with all of that said i'm bo maddox i'm robert ortegon i'm ashley chancellor i'm dakota chancellor and this was collateral cinema we will be back in another two weeks we are out out collateral gaming is better
Collateral Cinema is an L Company production. All music and movie clips are owned by the respective creators and are used for educational purposes only. Please don't sue us. We're poor.